there you go. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Andrea Earl. Welcome to Google Boo. Yay. And uh, Yay. there we go. I'm Stacey Klein. I'm her uh, comrade in arms. And we're both teachers in the Santa Ana Unified School District. Um, we're uh, Canvas leads in our district and um, part-time instructional coaches and just having a great fun this year with virtual <laughs> learning. <laughs> Absolutely. So if you haven't had a chance yet, please fill out our form. Um, it'll help you participate in one of our activities that we're going to do today. Plus, um, it'll enter you into our raffle for some swag, which we'll be sending out. Okay. Stacy, I'll pop that back in the chat. Um, by the way, Stacy and I are on the board of Orange County Q. We are a Q affiliate, and our the mission of our of Q is to support teachers in the implementation implementation of technology in the classroom. So we are here to support you. All right, let's. So there's that form again. Did that work? There we go. There's that form again. Make sure you got it, please. And is in the chat if you want to grab it there too. We are going to share the slides. Um, Andrea has a beautiful thin slides at your protocols sample um, that she's going to model in a little bit. So we didn't want to share the slides just yet because we don't want to throw that off. And then as soon as that session's done, I'll put the bit.ly in the chat. All right, how you can connect with us. Um, you can go to our YouTube channel. Uh, we just finished a couple weeks ago an ed camp in conjunction with um, Q Los Angeles. And we have a ton of videos, awesome presenters sharing ways they use technology in the classroom, ways they connect with their students. And uh, so it's a great place to go for some resources. We also, um, you can follow us on Twitter, of course. And if you want to tweet us out tonight, that would be awesome. And check out our website. Uh, oh, and our new Facebook page. We forgot to put that up there, but you can find us under groups, OCQ, uh, on our brand new Facebook page. I'll add the uh, Facebook link to the slides. Um, I apologize for not getting that up there. If you can, pretty please, with sugar on top, click on that link I just threw in there and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once we hit 100 subscribers, we'll be able to name our YouTube channel OCQ. So we would really be grateful. You all, there's 27 people in here. We'll get 27 uh, spots closer. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. And remember, if you join Q and then subscribe to us as your affiliate or choose us as your affiliate, you'll find out about all of our events through our monthly newsletters. All right, let's get on with the show. So we're going to start with Stacy. She's going to show us this really cool hack for Google Meets. So take it away, Stacy. Yay. So um, Google Meet started adding um, closed captioning recently over the past year, and it's mind blowing. It's incredibly useful. I am going to share my screen in just a minute, but I'll go over the slide first. Um, when you open up a Google Meet, you can click on closed captioning and it will live caption and it is exceptionally accurate. I see very few errors in it. And so that'll show up at the bottom. But the coolest thing since sliced bread is that Chrome has Google Translate built in. There's nothing to turn on. Uh, it's already built in. And you just click on that with a right click or a control click. And you can choose the language that you want it to display in. And I have used it over and over and over again with parent meetings. And so if I'm speaking with a parent and I don't have a translator available, that parent can read the uh, translation because most of our parents are are comfortable, you know, they, they speak English, but they're more comfortable if we are translating into Spanish um, or providing that um, bridge there. So between that and um, the uh, Google Meet translation, you really have a really, really wonderful connection with your parents. So I'm going to demonstrate that now. I'm going to share my screen. Let me stop. Let me sharing. open up. I'm going to leave that there for just a second. I'm going to open up a Google Meet. So when you I'm trying to think, I forgot, I'm not in my cool. I'm not in my enterprise, I'm in my district account, but I think I can just it'll still work with that too. Should I stop sharing? No, it's okay. I can oh I can share. So um uh -oh.
So you can see I've started a Google Meet and I've actually used this. Our district is using um, Zoom this year because uh, Google breakout rooms were not ready yet and a host of other things. We started teaching in like the second week in August. So uh, SAUSD had to pivot pretty quickly. Wow, this is graphic here. Um, I'll turn off my extra lighting. Um, so um, that's not even better. When uh, our district, uh, we're very grateful, uh, subscribe to Zoom for us. So we're using Zoom, but Google Meet, you can just share the screen as you see I'm doing right here. And it's showing the uh, closed captioning at the bottom. And you can see it's really accurate uh, and it's live captioning. So I'm going to uh, control click or right click on the closed captioning in the bottom. and. Let me show you one cool tool. We were talking about this the other day. If you click on annotate in Zoom and grab Spotlight and this little idea, a uh, little feller here, you can see I have a, a cursor that you can follow on the screen. There's lots of wonderful cursors you can download and install on your Chrome browser, but this is built into Zoom. And Nicolina and I were geeking out over the uh, Zoom tools the other day. so. This is wonderful. So now I'm going to control click or right click on closed captioning and I'm going to translate. You can see I have already chosen Spanish uh, previously, but you can actually click on, let me move my little zoom faces there, the triple dots and you can translate into another language. For example, I'll choose French or something. Um, and so notice how before it was this exquisite translation of French and now it's translating into, looks like it's still translating into Spanish. I might need to do that before the meeting starts because I was already translating. Oh no, because I didn't click translate yet. Now it's going to chance, now it's translating into French. So um, I do speak French conversationally and the translation looks fantastic. So I'm really so anyways, that, that's a quick little Google hack. We're, we're going to try to keep it pretty quick tonight because we have a lot of wonderful things to share. But if anybody doesn't have a question about that, um, I'll stop sharing. So once again, you just turn on closed captioning and then you right click and then you can translate into another language. So actually, SUNY asked if the parents can do it on their end. Yes, the parents can do it on their end. But if you even if you don't sometimes in a parent meeting it's hard enough to like get your students or your colleagues to move their mouse around the screen if you just turn it on they can see it even if you're you can embed it one meet into another meet or you can embed a google meet into zoom um and um so it's just it's a phenomenal tool can't say enough wonderful things and i definitely have used it with my families so i'm going to turn off my google meet all right and did you know that if you want to start a, a new slides form oh, doc yeah, yeah, yeah. or a, or spreadsheet in Google, all you've got to do in your uh, in the URL bar, in the Omni bar, type new or type the app, the name of the app, so doc.new, and you're going to get a whole new document. So yeah, Andrew, do you want to advance that slide? Yep, forgot. There we go. We had you guys. We had whenever Andrea comes up with an amazing idea, I'm like going. It's, I'm so excited. I never say no to her, but I know we're going to be like buried. And we had That's so, much, so fun. much fun. Every single slide has like another bitmoji or we were geeking out over the little so icon. If everyone and, wants to like open up another window really quick and just try it, try doc.new or slide.new or forms.new. It just pops forms. up. It's yeah. awesome. You don't have to go to your drive. You don't have to file new and all that stuff. So all right, that was a quick. All right, next, that was just a little hidden gem. All right, today, now we're gonna talk about thin slides. Um, if you've used thin slides before, uh, go ahead and throw in the chat what, what you've done with them. And for those of you who've never used thin slides, the whole idea is it's one word, one image, the kids have five, five minutes, that's it, and be prepared to share. So we're going to do the thin slides activity right this second. And let me grab the link. Hang on, where did I just put the link? Do you want to do the next slide, Andrea? No, not yet. Hang on. Okay, good, sorry. Okay. <laughs> so um, thin, hang on, I got to, oh, whoops. 
almost forgot to change the settings. <laughs> Anyone with the link? So you do, all right. Yeah, you know, updating links is important. Okay, copy link, got it. Okay, so if you, if you oh, want, right. Andrea, go, uh, yeah. go to the next slide because you there you go. All right, so um, thin slides are a great way if you want kids to summarize anything. And so what I want you to do is I want you to listen to this music and I'm going to put the slide deck that we're sharing. Oops, go back. The slide deck we're sharing, I'm going to put in the chat and find your slide, one word, one image, and you have five minutes. And here's the music. Hopefully you can hear it. There we go. Find your slide. This is so cool, Andrea. Everybody's slide has their name on it. We had to make sure to get spooky music that was from YouTube because we're going to post this on our YouTube channel. And if your music uh, isn't from YouTube, uh, YouTube will shut down your sound. So uh, YouTube has a whole bunch of free music that integrates into um, your YouTube presentation so that it doesn't get blocked. Oh, good point. Andrea, what is your theme for the thin slides? Is it anything goes or did you have a theme? The slide is the music. The music is your inspiration for the slide. Ah, good. Music is your inspiration. And so I'll pause for a second. Hang on. Oops, go back. Okay, pause for a <laughs> second. Oh, darn, lost the timer. But um, I don't know if you could hear Stacy say that we picked the music from YouTube because otherwise, if you post this, a post a video to YouTube and you use um, other music, copywritten music, uh, YouTube will block you. But so this just came off right off YouTube. And your, your inspiration is the music. I keep clicking the wrong thing. So I'm going to start the timer, but I'm only going to go for about another three minutes. OK? You can, you can drag your, your slider across too, Andrew, if you want to drag it to like three minutes or two minutes. Oh, yeah, I could. That's OK. I'll do about four minutes. So this is our quiet work time. And Andrea Beth shared in the chat that she's using thin slides with her students next week to explain what they're learning about primaries and caucuses in the US government class. I love that image, Yvonne. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Well, 
do one more minute. So go ahead and finish up. Whoops, sorry. All right, we'll go ahead and finish up. Sorry. Um, the two screen, the two monitor thing. All right, so um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to actually switch what I'm sharing and we're going to go into what everybody created. And the cool thing about thin slides is, as someone put it in the chat, it's the kids doing the work. So the kids interpreting what they're seeing and the kids sharing out. So if everybody wants to go ahead and unmute your mic, and when I hit your slide, you have 30 seconds. Why did you pick the word? Why did you put the image? What do they mean to you? So hang on, let me, okay. Who's up first? Introduce yourself and go. I guess that's me. <laughs> I'm Judy Wynn. Um, I don't know, just thinking of a funeral, uh, saying goodbye. So, um, so um, I try to find a, a font that matches goodbye in a little bit of a creepier way. And then um, an image of uh, what I guess could be interpreted as a procession. Very nice. And I don't know if, if some of you noticed, Judy, at the beginning, she had picked a different image and then changed her mind. And, uh, but you know, she was able to do that in the five minutes. All right, next. Um, that's mine. I picked the word alive. It just reminded me of like a zombie scene. Okay. Next. Uh, I picked creepy because it sounded very creepy sounding. Okay. And the picture is from SNL because it reminded me of that immediately. <laughs> okay. Hey, Jan. Jan, unmute. No? All right, we're going to move on. We'll come back if you want to participate. All right, next. That's me. I thought of a haunted house and spooky. Ah. All right, next. And that's me. <laughs> oh, you're cutting out. I'm sorry. All right, next. Sorry. Thought of a haunted house and words. Erica, if you want to type your response in the chat, that would be great. And then we can all see it while you pick this. Okay. Oh, moving on. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm on the car. Okay. Hi, that's me. Um, I don't know. I just thought the music was a little spooky. So that was the first image that I that I could put in there because I was having technical issues. Oh no. <laughs> So I thought it felt eerie, and so I looked for something that would make me think of night. Oh, okay. Erica had another good idea. She has the students add voice to thin slides during asynchronous. Good tip. Ooh, like that. Um, okay, this was mine, and I actually started out the first part of the music. I was thinking of a faraway train, and then it started to get spookier as I listened to it, and so it was like, okay, kind of out of this world, alienish. I don't know. That's good. Um, I'm Yvonne. I did that slide and I just love Halloween and the music I loved and I like all things vintage. If you see my video behind me, my whole house is decorated with like vintage Halloween stuff. Cool. That one's mine. I wanted to add my bitmoji and stay like on theme of Halloween and everything else. Right. And you've got an animated GIF in there. That's the second eerie. Oh yeah, that, that's mine. I noticed like great minds think alike. <laughs> I, um, I, it was totally eerie to me and which is kind of like spectral. So I was kind of envisioning the picture that I went out to images. I was like, oh, there it is. Perfect. Perfect. That one's mine. I just thought of spooky music and, but not super scary. So I found a cute spooky house. Mm -hmm. Hi, that's me, um, Angela saying, 
Uh, <laughs> the movie, the, the sound reminded me of a zombie and just like kind of got creepier and creepier. And then I was like, I chose eerie instead of creepy, but yeah. Right. Very eerie. Okay. Ooh, that's a good word. Kristen, go ahead. That's mine. The music, I think when I realized what you were asking from the task, it was a particularly irritating sound in that song. So discordant came to mind and then seeking sort of a spooky looking place that it would fit in. That's that great. And it's, it's interesting how different, different uh, people interpret things differently. And that's one of the beauty of the project of this activity. All right, next. Oh, that one right there is mine. I too thought eerie and the picture just kind of spoke to me because it seemed as if you don't know what's coming, but yet it seems kind of dark. So that's where I went with it. That was great, Omar. Um, I was looking at Kristen. She's uh, her cat keeps coming into and out of view. So I'm like, oh, ooh, extra spooky. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I've had so much fun with these bitmojis with Andrea's. We're cracking up over these. So spooky, that's dark. <laughs> it's interesting if you notice a lot of people pick the word eerie, but total different interpretations. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed a couple people in the chat put how they use um, thin slides. Thin slides is an edu protocol. Uh, in the presentation, I do have um, a couple links that'll give you a little, a couple videos that'll give you a little more information on thin slides and how you can use it. But you can see this whole activity took only 10 minutes, five minutes to find the image and the word, and then five minutes to share. Um, and we, this is a great way to introduce a new activity or a new topic, a story you're going to read. There's so many things you could do with it. All right. Let's go ahead and go back to the presentation. So one word, one image, five minutes. Oops, did that work? There you go. Um, originally, I did pick a Halloween timer because, you know, it's Halloween. But I realized I didn't want that timer to influence your thoughts and how you interpreted the music. So, and then just a little, um, we have a little hidden. Oh, that didn't work. I can't do it that way, can I? Ah, go back. Okay, go back. So um, just a little um, hidden gem in here. How many people know about grid view? This is amazing. While all your students are working, down here in the bottom right-hand corner of your slide screen is that little shape that looks like this. And then I can see everybody's work at one time. So you can see all the kids, all their working. Of course, I'm sharing the wrong screen, but you get the idea. Um, but it's a great way to keep track of your kids and to say, hey, little Johnny, you need to get to work, you know. Um, anyway, and I don't, someone asked, I don't, um, I don't show that to the kids while they're working. Um, because even though they are all on their same, on the same slide deck, I do want them focusing on their own slide and their own presentation. And you with know, their Andrea, show them grid view using your roster to slide slides because okay. That's a great example. Then you can make sure that all of us teachers are paying attention. Good idea. All right, so here's the presentation you guys worked on. Whoops, did it go? There you go. So now we do have some extra slides and I would tell the kids to work on the, the slide with their name, but it doesn't really matter. But you see how I can see what everyone's doing at once. Super, super helpful. Um, all right, let's go back to, all right, to, all right, go back to present. I love Andrea's spooky reveal of the uh, tombstone. <laughs> all right, so, um, all right, am I on that one? Okay, um, here are just some examples. Um, thin slides can be used for vocabulary. Uh, I did a, a unit on the Iditarod. I teach math, but I wanted something engaging, so I used the Iditarod as kind of a backdrop for a lot of math, different math lessons and practice. Um, so I just gave each student a word and they had to research the word, find a picture, and then they had to teach the class what it meant. So 50 words or 40 words and 40 kids in a class, I didn't have to do the teaching and the kids weren't doing anything boring like looking up every single word or you know writing sentences or any of that boring stuff. Um, and at the end, they all knew the words. Um, here's a science teacher that used it for the vocabulary to introduce a new, a new unit. Uh, idioms down here. Um, can you see? Yeah, you can see me. Um, this is um, 
money burning a hole in your pocket. But this is my favorite down here, a wolf in sheep's clothing. If you, I don't know if you can see that. When you get the slide deck, you'll see. Um, summarize. So um, this was actually a, a professional development I did for the teachers at my school. And I showed them a video clip. And then they had to summarize it in one word, one sentence. Um, it was about distance learning and, you know, and the shift and all that. Um, but what they, what they, um, what their priorities were for distance learning or what they wanted to focus on. So, um, and hers was um, the possibilities. Um, anyway, and then reflection after they read something. I've also seen people do, um, to summarize a book instead of a book report, um, or you're, you're all reading the same book as a class to do, um, you know, everybody pick a picture for the setting, right? And because we don't know how the kids, um, what their perception of a setting is. If you're talking about a farm, we know there's lots of different farms, but it's interesting for the kids to see what they think a farm is and then to see everybody else's perception as well. Um, like we all saw, just saw your perception of, um, of that music. All right, moving on. So I do have two videos here for you and you'll get that in the slide deck. That'll tell you a little bit more about um, thin slides and how you can use them. All right. All right, now I know that you want to know how I got your names on the slides. How many people want to know that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Everybody's like, yeah. Yes. So um, this is from Alex Ke uh, Alice Keeler. Okay. It's an add on to Google Slides. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch screens again. Actually, this is kind of cool, this switching back and forth. Kind of getting into it here. All right. Um, she has, it's a form. And it's an add-on, but it's an add-on only with her form. So it's not, you won't find it in the, um, in the, in the Google store or anything. I mean, in the Chrome store. Mandy, but, can you, can you reload that page? I want to see if it updated after. No, uh, no, because I had to copy it. So what I did is I took your form. So here's the form everybody filled out. I then made a spreadsheet. But then I had to copy just the names into her form. And then one, and we'll give you a link to her form. Once you get that, you're gonna add it. It's called roster to slides. You set it up and it will tell you it's an unsafe, um, but she guarantees it. And then you create the slides and it literally creates those slides. Um, so really gave everybody two slides. And I might tell the, the kids to delete the second one, the blank one, and just use one. But um, then you have everybody's name already on their slide, and the kids aren't fighting over slides. So we will, this is a link to, um, to the spreadsheet. So just wherever you have the kids' names, and I will warn you, the first time I did it, I did it straight from the form. Well, when you collect data from a form and turn it into a spreadsheet, the first line, the first column is the date and time. So all of a sudden I had a Google Slides presentation with all these dates and times. So really you could put anything in here. I could have put my vocabulary words here and then everybody gets one vocabulary word, right? So I don't have to be, you know, in the classroom I'd give everybody an index card and this is your word, but uh, remotely, this is a much easier way to do it. I could even do their word with, um, with their name. So both things pop up on the on the slide deck. Wouldn't that be great? So, all right. Any questions about that? Any questions? That all was right. way cool, Andrea. Everybody dug that. <laughs> I know that was just one of those really. There's we have so many things. All right. So the next thing we're going to share is like my favorite. This is like changed things for me. You know how you do a digital notebook or you give the kids their own copy of a slides presentation, right? You do it through Google Classroom or Canvas, you know, every student gets their own copy. And then you go back and you go, oh, I forgot to put this image in. Oh, I wanna add more information. Or wouldn't it be great if I only gave them the first two slides and then I gave them the next slide another day? Well, we've got a hack for you. So I'm again gonna stop share. I'm gonna switch screens and I'm gonna show you how this works. Actually, we're going to play with it first. So the first thing, um, Stacy, give them a copy. Can you put the link in the chat of the student deck? 
So everyone's going to get a copy of the student slide deck. And it's just a cheesy slide deck. It's not all that exciting, but it'll force you to make a copy. So if everyone would be so kind as to make a copy. And then I am going to change screens. I'll come over here. All right. So everyone should have a slide deck that looks like mine. And uh, do me a favor, kiddo. If you drag and drop it in there, I don't have that one loaded. <laughs> oh, okay. It's at the bottom. It's on the speaker notes. Oh, but thank I'll... you, thank you. Okay, I can get that. Sorry. <laughs> that's another. That's another tip. Uh, if you have uh, links to share, stick them in your yes. speaker notes, and then you have them later. Speaker so, notes are the bomb. Make sure you get the student one though. Yeah. So when you click on it, it's gonna say it's gonna force you to copy. So everybody gets their own copy. And this would be just like passing it out through Google Classroom or Canvas. I am a big Canvas a pro tip. If you add slash copy instead of slash ed edit, it'll force a copy. Um, any Google Doc slash copy, it'll force a copy for you. Yeah. See, if you look at the link that that Stacy put in the chat, it says copy at the end. She, I deleted everything up to and including the word edit and put copy. Yeah. So thumbs up if you have a copy now. All right, everybody's got it. All right, oh no, I forgot I wanted to add something. So I'm gonna go to the slide I wanna change and I'm gonna change this slide. And I wanted to put this. This is so cool. <laughs> all, right, you guys, so, all you teachers are gonna love and this. I want, this is first grade. I want the kids to type the word spooky. I don't know if I'm just making that up. I don't know. Everyone go to this slide. So it's slide four in your copy. What do you see in the top right hand corner? A link. Do you guys <laughs> see where it says update? No? Oh, cool. Do you see update? Click update. And what happened? Did it work? Yay, Andrea. Did it work? Okay, thank you, Kristen. Yay, okay. Yes, it worked. <laughs> now, so in the past, it was really essential that you told people don't make a copy of this because you won't have an update. Now they have this update linking and now you can let people make their own copy and they still get your updates. It's very cool. Now wow. here's the trick. There's a couple tricks. The magic. first trick is if you were to type on this slide before I updated it, my updates will take precedence over yours. Okay, so you will lose your work. So you can't update a slide that the kids have already done work on. Okay. Well, you you can, but you'll mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> you'll take away their work, right? So, all right, I'm going to show you how to do this now because it's a little bit tricky. So we start with my teacher. I'm going to call this the teacher copy of the slides presentation. Okay, and I'm going to close my student copy. In fact, if everybody wants to try this, just open a new, do slides.new and uh, call it playing or something fun that you'll remember. Go ahead and um, just create a slides presentation. It's just like two slides is perfect, okay? I'll give already a minute to do two slides, just two slides. Put some stuff, put something on the first slide and put nothing on the second slide, okay? And if you like this background, you can just steal, you can make a copy of mine and, and steal it and do whatever you want. All right, so everybody got their copy, their new presentation? Go ahead and label it teacher, put teacher copy in front of your word, in front of your title. That way you won't mess up. All right, now you're gonna make a copy of your own presentation. So simple file, make a copy and you wanna copy the entire presentation. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, entire presentation, that's fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of my entire presentation and instead of teacher copy, this is gonna say student copy because I know I'm gonna up, the students are gonna get a copy to, you know, you get the idea, right? So now I have two identical presentations. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put them next to each other. Are you gonna be able to see them both? Yes, you are, perfect, because I did share correctly. All right, 
So now you have your teacher presentation. For me, it's on the left and my student, which is on the right. I'm not gonna update this first slide. I like it, I want the kids to get it just like that. But you know, if I give them every puzzle, right, the first day, they're gonna do them all. And then what are they gonna do for their bell work for the rest of the week, right? So what I'm gonna do on the student copy is I'm gonna delete everything I don't want them to have right away. Okay. I'm happy with them having the title. I'm happy with them having the first puzzle. So go ahead and delete everything from the student copy that you don't want them to have from the get-go. Now head back to your teacher copy. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do one page. I want them to have this page. I'm gonna take this off. And what I'm going to do for my student copy, I'm going to take off the puzzle because I don't want them to have the puzzle. I need to make a copy of these blank slides. You must have blank slides that will be updated in the future. So I can't just leave it here and add slides. That doesn't work. I have to have fillers. They can just be plain white or the, you know, whatever style you're using. So I want them, I'm gonna do four more puzzles, let's say. So I'm gonna have four more slides. From my teacher cop, from my teacher copy, I'm gonna copy these four slides and paste them into my student copy. But you'll notice when I paste, it says do not link or link to original presentation. That's the key. So I'm linking those four slides to my original. And I click link. This is kind of the magic. But you have to have those blank slides. If you don't have them, then you can't add. You can't just add a slide at the end. OK? So then I go out and I find another puzzle that I want to add, or whatever it is I want to add for the kids. I'm just going to copy this one to. And when I'm ready to give it to them, I simply add it to my teacher copy. So go ahead and add something to your teacher copy. You do need to click off the slide you changed. And then you will notice on the student copy, they may have to refresh. If they only have the little link, um, they might have to refresh or go off it usually just clicking off the slide that you changed and then clicking back on it and they will get the update. So go ahead and see if you get the update there. Are there any questions? Yay, good, or Sally got it working. <laughs> now, yeah. <laughs> Yay, way cool. Oh, good, Angela got it. Yay. So, and this is recorded. Would you please re repeat that? Where did you click link again to synchronize? So you copied the slides from your original into the student deck, right? Did you do that? Yes. Okay, then I just changed something on my teacher deck and it automatically gives the kid oh this update on mm -hmm. that slide in their deck. Yay, Carrie did it awesome. too. Thanks. I don't see that. Everybody got it? Now, you got to tell the kids, don't click here and don't do other weird stuff. If they unlink it, you know, game over. At least for that slide, right? But the um, thing too is if you're doing this with adults, like I have my HyperDoc training guide for people that are becoming Google certified educators. I did it. That was so cool. Thank you so much. Okay. And so if they if they um, update it, that's great. But if they've made notes on their slide by having that little update there, they know they can make a copy of their slide, keep their notes, and update the slide that I'm updating, right. and that way they don't lose any of their work. Right. So you know this is different from. You know, if you just want the kids to view, I see Vonna got it. She just, yes? Yay. <laughs> um, it's different than if you're just sharing a slide deck for the kids to look at, or if you're sharing, like when we shared this presentation with you at the end of, you know, tonight. Um, you'll see the updates if we make it because it's our copy. 
but this is if the kids each have their own copy, okay? Andrea. Yes. If they, sorry, I got a little, I got a little behind because that's me, <laughs> but okay. I, you, um, when you said to put the filler slides, those you're putting on the student deck, right? Right, but they're copied from the teacher deck. That's Oh, the okay, that's where I, okay. So I have to make, I put the filler slides in the teacher deck and then I make the copy. And then you copy those filler Whatever slides. Whatever I add, yeah, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I actually, I'll make it a little more complicated. I actually have a third slide deck. That's my perfect one that I want it to end up as. Okay. So that I already have the stuff ready that I want to add in to the teacher okay. deck. Does that yeah. make sense? Uh, yeah. Otherwise, you know, I'm doing it every night and trying to find the puzzle and whatever. So I kind of have it ready, but you do have to label them or, you know, you get confused. Yeah. All right, that's linking. All right, I'm going to go ahead and, well, now that you've got your slide deck open, we're going to um, play another little game. I don't know if we're going to get all this done, but we're going to try. All right, infinite cloner. Um, I don't know about you, but it's so much fun if you, oh, it doesn't, oh, it doesn't work if I'm sharing. Hang on, go back. Okay, so hang on, I, can, I can't share it. So, you know, well, there we go. You know, more than one copy, isn't that kind of fun? The kids love it, especially in math. Oops, you know, you can have multiple copies of something. Isn't that fun? So here's my, <laughs> I'm such a geek. All right. I, I had fun copying infinite copies of Andrea. <laughs> okay, so now, just find any image that you want or now, um, any image, you can just grab anything grab one of your bitmojis or just any image and throw it on your, um, throw it in here on your slide in your slide deck. And I'm gonna go over here and grab this pumpkin just because it's cute. And I'm gonna go back to the infinite cloner slide and um, I'm gonna paste it in. So I've got one pumpkin, but you know, it's elementary school and they went to count pumpkins or in uh, middle school, we need to uh, use alg you know, algebra tiles or two color tiles. I keep clicking off the right slide. All right, here's how you do it. First of all, hi, everyone have something? Thumbs up if you have something to clone. And it's infinite cloner, not exactly infinite, but close enough. Um, all right, I don't know if you, you know how to copy, control C, control paste, or command C, command V. But if you do command D or control D, watch what happens. You get a whole ton of them. Wait, what? Can you guys that see this? That's so fun. Okay, that's the first thing. So everybody do that. Command D and get a whole pile of them. Now I, I need <laughs> to get these guys out of the way because they're in my way. Good um, job. This is one. Okay. Now, second thing you're going to want to do is you want to highlight everything you just, all those copies. And I got too much stuff here. So you know what? I am going to change screens because it's better to do it where there's not so much stuff. Hang on. <laughs> Which screen am I on? Uh, okay, there we go. This one. All right, I'm going to go back to this this uh, deck. It's a little easier to see. Let me put my pumpkin back there. Oop, P. And how do I do a bunch of copies? What do I do? Nice. Control D, exactly, or Command D, depending on if you're a Mac or not. All right, yeah, there you go. And you can go off the side. There's nothing saying you can't go off your slide. All right, now highlight everything you copied. Get that whole thing in a, in a box. You just literally drag your mouse across it and they're all highlighted, okay? And it really works best on a blank slide, but you can always do it on a blank slide and put it back, you know, somewhere complicated. Um, in fact, Stacey, if you wanna fix my, that I messed up that slide. <laughs> all right, you're gonna right click everyone. Definitely, what, what do you want me to fix, Andrew, that take off the pumpkins or? Yeah, the infinite cloner I messed up. All right, yes. right click. We're going to first go to align horizontally and pick center. Everybody got that? Yes. And then it's still highlighted. Now click it, right click again, align vertically, middle. Cool. How do I highlight everybody at the same time? I you hold the whole hold, row. You hold oh my goodness, that was so awesome. Through. They all just subsumed. That was great. Well, they're all here. So to move it, you have to highlight the whole thing and that's the whole pile. And now I can move it wherever I want. 
And then when I click it, I just click once and they all come out. Isn't that cool? Oh, that's fun. That is so cool. All right. That's awesome. All right, we have a couple more things and we're getting on seven, but um, Stacey and I work so hard on this. We're just gonna keep going. Yeah, and having so much fun. But, but Andrea, all 27 people are still here. So it's obviously, they're awesome. enjoying it. Okay. <laughs> all right, we haven't scared you off. Ooh, get it, scare yeah, you yeah. know, okay. All right, um, so that's that's infinite. Can you see my thing? Infinite cloner, okay. Um, there's a little video if you forget how to do it. Um, not that we don't have a video. Uh, we gave you a couple links to places to get some, um, let me go bigger here, some resources for icons that you can use, little um, Emojipedia. Yeah, you, on your phone, you've got the little emojis. If you go to Emojipedia, there are tons for every, you know, they're from Android has their own, Apple has their own. There's hundreds. Type in the word happy, you'll have a ton. Um, and you can use them in line when you're writing directions for the kids or um, um, I do it since we use Canvas, I'll sometimes use an emoji is the part of the title so they know what day we're on or what activity we're on. Um, the shortcut for Mac to get to the regular emojis, control command space. So who's on a Mac, try control command space. You should, it should pop up. Here, can I drag that? There you go. C control. So I can get all the ones and then I favorited some, right? Um, on a PC, it's uh, Windows plus period for Windows 10. Windows period. I think it's Windows plus period. The plus sign and a period, I think. I don't have a Windows machine, so. But for the Mac, it's... Um, a so now you put them in directions. That's great. It's it's really visual, special for our, even our bigger kids. I mean, it's great for the littles because you can tell them check on you know click on the frog right the frog assignment. Um, there you go. Yvonne got it. Awesome. Yay. It's funny if you could you control and click in any white space, and a lot of times your uh, emojis will show up. And then otherwise, I always resort to I can't get it to do it in Zoom, so I'm always using Emojipedia when I need to put a. Uh, so Emojipedia is great, and those are emojis. Oh, Angela got them. Yay. Um, Noun Project are great for little icons. They're black and white icons, um, but for everything. Um, sometimes I'll be doing a project with the kids, and I'll give them like 20 icons from the Noun Project, and that's all they can use to tell a story, right? Or that's all they can use to explain their data if I'm doing um, like a... a it's called number mania is another edge protocol instead of them spending hours and hours and hours looking for for pictures um and then flat icons another one so and then in this presentation we have a bunch of um a bunch from um that were done by slides carnival where i got this template um, those are some emojis and then they have all these different ones which you of course can use and these shapes for whoops from slides carnival are editable if you, um, you have to, whoops, go out. <laughs> I know, in, out, in, out. If you click on one, these are just so cool. Um, I can go and change the color. Oops, I didn't do that. Let's try that again. Uh, oh, I'm on the wrong thing. How about the fill color? Mm -hmm. And I can just change it to anything. Isn't that cool? So you can have fun with these, play with them, change the color, change the size. All right, moving on. So, all right. All right, here's the next thing. Go back to your slides deck that you started. How many people have done record to slides? I think someone mentioned that, that they do that in the thin slides. It's awesome. Um, we have a Spanish language teacher and she, um, she uses this to have the kids uh, record themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a, little, it's a little easier than Flipgrid because it's not as busy and there's not as much going on. Um, and she does it in a shared presentation, so they all see it, and it's super quick. All right, so Record to Slides is um, an add-on for Google uh, Slides. And we put the, we put the, um, uh, the add-on in the actual link there, so you can click on that. So oh, I got to go back and reshare. Let me go back and share again. Wait, where am I? 
Okay, hopefully this is the right one. Andrea, can you make your screen big? Oh, there we go. Yeah, there you go. So, <laughs> no, that's the wrong one. Wait a minute. Flipping around. Just have to, I want just top one. Okay. I'm digging these two screens. I gotta tell you, this is, this is awesome. All right. So if you don't have record to slides, you're gonna go to your add-ons menu and you're gonna to go to get add-ons. Now, oh wait, is it? I lied, I don't think it's there. It's an extension, I lied, sorry. Yeah, that, there's Chrome a difference Chrome. between an add-on will go in an app and an extension is an extension of the Chrome browser. So you'll figure out which one it is. It's, at the it's time. an don't extension, worry. go to the Chrome store. It's called record to slides and that link in our presentation will just take you there. But it's funny, Andrea, that this one is, it's funny that this one's a Chrome extension because you would think it would be an add-on because it's in yeah. slides. <laughs> it only works in slides and it only works when you have slides open. You get this little blue plus sign and here, is this gonna work? All right, uh, you do need to change the permissions though. Make it to anyone. Um, even though I had it set to my domain, I, some of my kids couldn't see it. Um, and I did this on my like welcome back to school slides and um, my weekly what's happening in the classroom slides. So super easy. Ready? Here we go. No, we don't. We're not going. Let's. Oh, I keep clicking. Okay. Okay. You got to click the record button. That hurt. That helps. Hi, this is Andrea Earl. I hope you're enjoying our Google Boo and learning how to use slides in some fun and engaging ways today. And then you click stop. Go figure, kick, go, record and stop. And here it is. And, ooh, is that a... Oh, I think Andrea froze. <laughs> it's okay. She's on a couple channels. Loser. She'll be back. She broke the internet. <laughs> Andrea broke the internet. Stacy? Yes. I haven't added an extension in so long since like I got one. I can't. Remember. Oh, okay. Let me here. I'll share my screen until she gets back. Okay. And um, so here we are in. Um, Chrome, and uh, an easy way to do that too is just to type Chrome extension oh. record to slide, okay. and bada bing, bada boom, it comes right up. Okay, cool, thank you. And Clay codes. Clay is one of our um, our Google certified trainers in in Google for Education, and he's also in our Global GEG, and he writes these. He's a Google innovator, so I think that's his thing. Um, and so we're so lucky that he writes. He's the one that did um, uh, meet attendance as well. And so you just click add to Chrome, piece of cake, and then it's there. So it's our, it, then it's there. And so now I can, let me see if I reload, I should be able to see the little icon on my slides. Yep, so now you see I have the uh, record the slides button there as well. So hopefully Andrew will be able to come right back in because this normally doesn't take that long unless her internet just, oh, goody, she's back, she's back. back. Yay, we weren't worried. We knew. That's why you, that's why you have two so Andrea, devices. I just showed them in your absence, I just showed them how to install that Chrome extension. I saw it, that was perfect, thank you. <laughs> but it's good to tag team and have a, have a buddy. All right, so I think if you want to keep sharing, Stacy, and from our next slide, um, are there any questions while I'm rebooting here? Do we have any questions from our, our peanut gallery? Andrea, I have a question again. Sorry, I feel like I don't want to take up I don't want to take up people's time with novice questions, but I have okay, so I did the extension and do, do I have to open a new slideshow before that little blue? You have to refresh. Just refresh. Okay. Yeah. That's just the nice thing. Just re reloading the page gets probably mute. Ooh. Oh yeah. Awesome. 
Now you do have to have all your students do it, or you might be able to um, have your IT person push it out to all your student accounts, your students. Yeah, and a lot of you, you might be a, um, a Google admin at your site. Like in our district, we have a super admin who manages our, he, he does all the web for the entire district. And then um, like Andrea will be an admin at um, her school, Mendez, and I'll be one at Advanced Learning Academy. And then what Joseph does is he lets us push out the apps or extensions that we feel are appropriate for our um, population. So that's really cool. Nice. And what are we giving away tonight, Andrea? <laughs> oh, I think you're muted. Yeah, I was trying not to give everybody the, the feedback loop. All right, we have some swag bags. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm grabbing everybody's name from the sheet, the same roster. Um, if anybody else, if you haven't done the form, if Stacey, you want to throw the form in there really quick? Because we only have 16 oh, people. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, you can share again, right, Hen? Um, maybe. <laughs> yes, I can. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yes, I got it. Let me go back to, I don't even know where my screen is, though. Hang on. There we go. All right, share screen. Let's I'm sorry, I had to go. Oh, I had to go back and un un make sorry, my screen. Can you let me update. share, please? Okay. Oh, right. We have to make her. See, we have to make her co host again. That's why. Yeah. Nope, I'm still. My... Um, Jorge might not. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just throw the, um, the link back in the chat so that everybody can, if you didn't get it, you don't need to see the screen, that's okay. Um, we'll give everybody a minute to, to fill out the form. All right. And then... Um, yeah, I'm here, Stacy. Oh, can you, good. Uh, could you make Andrea a, a co-host again, um, yes. Jorge, since she was kicked out? Yeah. Let's see here. All Thank right. you, super host. Thank you. Oh, not yet. Okay. There we go. Yeah, it was my own fault. I don't know what happened, but okay, let's go back here. All right, so I should be sharing. Am I sharing? No, I don't know. Yeah, you're sharing your entire uh, desktop. We're looking at your email. <laughs> oh, your email. Uh, stop. Nobody wants to see that. There we go. Wrong. <laughs> All right, number two. All right, so I've got everybody's names, and what I'm going to do is, um, okay, give me a sec. Do we have questions? Please, if anybody's got questions before we um, before we do our raffle, and you can just unmute and you know. Looks like some of us are hungry. Someone mentioned pizza? Question mark. Oh, pizza sounds good. I know. My in the chat, the uh, bitly to our slides tonight. <laughs> That's not a clickable one. Let me get a clickable one for you. Oh. The trick for Zoom is you need the whole HTTP for it to be a clickable link. Ah. Uh, and then make sure you get on Andrea's form so we can you can win some. Our our orange stress balls are the coolest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> A wheel of names. I'm trying to find WG. Yeah. I wanted to tag on to your idea with the um, the closed captions in Meet are yeah. super helpful. I would screencast videos for my class mm -hmm. stacked with a um, with a Meet underneath it. Exactly. So I, and because I had a deaf student, it meant I didn't who read really well. I was able to send that right out rather than get through an interpreter. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I did that for back to school night before Zoom now has um, live closed captioning. If you have the pro, um, I don't know if it translates yet. I can't remember. But um, but for back when we had back to school night, I had I opened up my Zoom so I could record, um, and then I had my Google Meet underneath it. So the, rec the Zoom was recording the full screen with my slideshow, but the Google Meet was translating below it. So it was like a double layer hack. It was very fun. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. You have to be careful when you're talking about fractions though, because <laughs> six 
doesn't always come out right in <sighs> Google Meet. <laughs> I also learned that don't talk about children as kids because my translation came out a bunch of goats. <laughs> in Spanish. All right, can everybody see the wheel of names? We're gonna go ahead and give away three swag bags because um, we really appreciate you coming. Please tweet us out. Join Q if you haven't. Um, we'll hang out for a few minutes if you want to chat because we're all about community and making each other better together. So here we go. And the winner is. Ooh. Heck yeah. Oh. Heck yeah. Woohoo. All right. Hey, good job, Angela. Woohoo. So Angela, before we're done, you're gonna have to put in the chat. Um, you can just chat privately to uh, Jorge actually, uh, your address so we can um, send you your swag bag. All right, let's see who's next. Cause I don't think, oh, maybe we put the, the addresses on the form, I don't remember. Oh, we did put the addresses on the form. And it's good. Yeah, you had that there. Yay. Very. Forget that we do have your um, we have your addresses. All right, last one. Who's it going to be? Raise your hand if it's going to be you. Here we go. And it is Lisa. Yay! Congratulations. Thank you all for joining us. I am going to stop the recording.